guys, welcome back to my channel. January 2023 continues with an amazing, unexpected chicken recipe. Well, as you can see, the scenery is a little bit different. Um, and that is because for the very first time, I am coming to you from my basement catering kitchen. Uh, we are in the middle of remodeling the downstairs putting it all back together from the flood. It is a lot of work, but I still have my kitchen and it's outdated. I mean, it's an original 1960s kitchen, but it works and I'm not out in the elements. Um, if you follow my channel, you know that I cannot fit my canner on my stove upstairs, which is part of the remodel um, inspiration and problem. And my wonderful husband set me up an amazing canning station outside, which works fabulous, except during the New England winters. And like today, I want to can this recipe up, and it is windy, it is miserable, it is wet. I do have a cover over it, but it doesn't matter. You still get the elements on you, and I've kind of had it. So I said, you know what, let's can downstairs. There's really nothing wrong with this space. I just don't come down here. So you get to see it for the first time today. And today we are gonna can up an amazing recipe. And I think it's a flavor profile that a lot of people wouldn't think of necessarily to put together to can. But we are gonna be canning up an Asian chicken thigh recipe. Now, I got this recipe originally from the canning diva herself, and I just think it is a fabulous recipe that my family really loves. It's incredibly versatile, because once you have it in the jars ready to go, this can become the base to a stir fry when you want to use it up. It could be the base to any type of an Asian infused dish you want to create for your family, or you could have it straight out of the jar with some sticky rice and some nice steamed vegetables. So many different uses, but yet a very unique and unexpected flavor profile from canning. When it comes to canning, I like to shift things up a bit. I want the flavors to be unexpected. I want them to be bold. I want them to be delicious. And this particular recipe offers all of that at once. So we are going to can that today. This is a cold pack recipe. I'm still going to wash my jars with a nice hot soapy water. I'm going to do the same to the rings and the lids. I'm going to inspect them as I always do to make sure they are in fact in top notch shape to do my canning. Because this is a raw pack recipe, it's going to be cold. Everything about the process is going to start cold. So once the jars are clean, you just set them aside, let them sit there until you need them. You do not have to keep these warm. Totally the opposite. You want to keep them just like at room temperature. We are going to put the meat in. It's going to be raw. The sauce we're going to use is going to be cold. We are going to start our dish in cold water in the pressure cooker. Everything is going to come to temperature at the same time. This will help prevent thermal breakage. If you don't do it this way and you take your raw packed cold jars and you stick them into a canner that has been prepared and the water is extremely hot, your jars are more than likely going to burst or at the very least crack wasting your time and your product and you definitely don't want that. So we are going to put this incredible dish together and get it on our shelf. Not only is it beautiful on the shelves, it is also delicious and a family favorite. Let's just get this going and we're going to do it from my catering kitchen. Welcome to my downstairs catering kitchen. I am so blessed to have this space. I really am. Just great for holidays and family gatherings, parties and big meals, whatnot. Can all be done nicely right in this room. Now let's get back to January. I came across an amazing deal on chicken thighs, one that I cannot pass up and I like pulling something unusual off the shelves when I'm canning. Um, it's impressive not only to myself but to the people who eat it and this is a great addition 
to your pantry. So what I'm going to basically do is trim up all the fat, all of this stuff I'm going to take right off of the chicken. I don't want that in, um, in my jars. So I'm going to clean it all up, throw it all in here, then I'll give it a good rinse and we will get right on with this. It's gonna go so quick because it's a cold pack recipe, but like I said, I don't want any of this. You don't want that on there. That's just gonna be gross in your jars, so we're gonna take this off. I never cut my meat on a cutting board. I always use an alternative. Um, I don't like the meat to absorb into the wood of the cutting board. I like to be able to wash it off and really, you know, get all the germs and everything off of there. Um, but I'm going to link down in the description one of my favorite boards that I like to use for cutting my meat that is safe for my family. just slicing up about six bunches of scallions. These are going to be used in the bottom of our jars in this canning recipe. We're going to start with one cup of honey, but before I pour honey into any measuring cup, I always give it a good spray with cooking oil. This allows the honey to release nice and easily from the cup itself. Now a cup of water. Three quarters of a cup of soy sauce, or in my case, coconut aminos. One six ounce can of tomato paste. I like to use organic. And a quarter cup of rice vinegar. You can also use apple cider vinegar if that's all that you have. A tablespoon of sriracha sauce. One tablespoon of onion powder. Two teaspoons of garlic powder, and three tablespoons of clear gel, which is a thickening agent safe for canning. I like to start whisking with my hand whisk first because it allows me to scrape the bottom and incorporate the ingredients nicely. Then I do like to move on to my electric whisk. This just makes the sauce so much smoother and it's actually a lot easier with my rheumatoid arthritis. For this canning recipe, I am going to be using my wide mouth jars. I'm going to be doing it in the quart sizes. You can do this in pints or in quarts. Wide mouth is best for this particular recipe because we're using whole chicken thighs. They tend to be obviously bigger. And by using the wide mouth, it doesn't taper on the neck. It stays nice and straight, allowing you to get the meat in there and pack it down. We're going to put approximately eight chicken thighs in the quarts. You'll do approximately four if you're doing pints. Again, that number will fluctuate depending upon the size of the thighs you're actually using. We are going to get a base of scallions in each of our jars. My canner could only do five quarts maximum at a time. I could put a layer of pints on top. I don't want to can this up in pints. That is not large enough for my family. But let me just say that if you were to can this up in pints, this is a fabulous dish to be able to take directly to work with you. Some leftover rice straight on its own. The flavor is phenomenal. Pop it in the microwave and you have a super quick lunch. Um, but for my size family, we need the quarts. So first things first, let's get our scallions in our jars. I put about two tablespoons of scallions in each jar. Got my scallions in the jar. Now I'm going to add my chicken. I only got six in here, so we'll see what the rest does. Da 
I'm kind of layering them in a circle. You don't want to layer them flat through the jar. You want to make sure that the core of the jars can actually get the liquid and they can actually get to the temperature that needs to be. And if you put them in flat and layer them on top of each other, you can't get to the core. Because I'm going in a circle, it kind of leaves a hole in the center, which is exactly what I want so that I can debubble and it can cook properly. Jars are full, I'm gonna wash my hands. This sauce that we made, we're gonna put into those jars. And let me just tell you, this sauce is the perfect combination of a flavor explosion. You have the sweet of the honey mixed with a, just a tiny bit of the heat of the sriracha. Um, everything is so cohesively together. You have the soy sauce, which in my case was actually coconut aminos. Um, if you can't have the sodium of soy sauce, you can also cut that in half or you can replace it with blackstrap molasses. Either way, it would be absolutely delicious and divine in this recipe. But for now, we are just going to actually ladle this right into our jars, maintaining that one inch headspace. This sauce needs a little bit of help to get down within the chicken. So after each ladle, you're definitely going to debubble. You can see the bubbles actually leaving the jar. That's how you know the sauce has penetrated its way all the way through those bubbles. You don't want those bubbles in there. You want to make sure that you are getting them all out. I had extra sauce left over from canning and there was no way I was wasting it. So I threw it in a mason jar and put it in the fridge for later use. We have our water in our canner, just a couple inches of it. So this was raw pack. Everything starts cool, including the water. Everything is the exact same temperature now, and it will all come to temperature together. This will prevent any thermal breakage and explosions, cracks. You don't want any of that to happen. You just went through all this hard work. You do not want to lose your product. So if it's cold pack, cold start everything. I did dump my leftover vinegar into this water. For those that don't know, it simply just kind of keeps the water nice and clean. It keeps your jars pretty, keeps them from getting speckled and spotted, which can happen when you can and is perfectly normal and acceptable. This just is a step that you can do to prevent it, possibly, still can happen, but I throw mine in all the time. I truly am in my element in more than one way. So while we are waiting for all this to come to temperature and pressure and get there, a few other options you have with this dish is you don't have to use chicken thighs. Chicken thighs I do like because it has the dark meat which provides the most flavor, but you could do this with chicken breast. You could also do this with pork. This sauce would be amazing with either of those three choices right there. The flavor, you guys, that comes from this is truly mind-blowing. It is so tangy, zesty. It has a tiny little kick to it with such a sweetness that they just blend together perfectly. This is an amazing flavor profile, and it's also a surprising one to find on your shelves that you've canned. I particularly like pulling profiles like this together for those nights when you have unexpected visitors. Somebody came by unexpectedly for dinner and what are you going to do? Order a pizza? 
Yeah, you totally could, but why should you? Why should you waste your money? You can have the most amazing thing ready to go on your shelf. The best part about this is it can be served so many different ways, straight out of the jar. Like literally dump it, heat it up, make yourself some sticky rice, steam some vegetables, and you have a delicious meal. And as always, the longer it sits, the better it gets. That is my motto with anything you can. The longer it sits there, the more the flavor just totally blends in with it even deeper than it already is. I am not an electric stove girl. I am a gas cooker, always have been. I really, I don't know how to regulate the electric stoves. Do you guys have that problem? Is there like one particular stove that you can actually use and use it really good over another one? Because if I was to try to cook an entire meal solely on electric, I think I would probably burn and mess up quite a few things. <laughs> Truly, I've cooked on gas for so long. I love how you can regulate and see the flame. This is just giving me an element with a color and a number, but I'll figure it out. I just need to maintain my pressure at 11. My PSI is 11 and that's where it needs to be. It's gonna take a while from a cold start, but I'm kind of psyched. This is the first canning that is happening in my catering kitchen or maybe now I should call it a canning kitchen. Like, what do you all think of it? It really is such a blessing to have an additional kitchen that's fully functioning in your home. It makes all the difference for those holidays and big parties or even messes that you don't want to be upstairs. Like, you can hide it all right down here and get to it later. It's outdated, but so am I. <laughs> And I do plan on giving it a fresh coat of paint and to keep the costs completely down because I don't use it enough and it's a perfect candidate for this type of treatment. The treatment I did on my kitchen island where I took it from that ugly basic build a grade for mica, lackluster, nothing special to it, and it now looks like butcher block. I'm thinking I'm going to do it down here as well because that is an absolute cheap way to really step up this space and make a huge visual impact, like for very little money, which is the goal here. What do y'all think? Do you guys have that extra kitchen? Now, growing up as a Portuguese child, we always had two kitchens. It was just a staple that I had growing up, something I'm very used to. So having one as an adult, I'm, I'm blessed and grateful as well. I'm just gonna let this come up to 11 PSI and then I will start my timer. I'm doing quarts. It's going to be an hour and a half of quarts. If this was pints, it would be an hour and 15 minutes. So once this gets up to pressure, I'll start it and I will see you guys back here when it's done. Our timers have gone off. Uh, processing is done. I am going to shut that off. We're going to leave this to depressurize on its own. It takes about 15 minutes or so. Um, once that valve hits zero, then I will open it. We will take these yummy jars out and have a peek at what delectable goodness is inside. My husband saw the sauce and got totally excited and went, are you making the Asian chicken thighs? And I went, yes I am. Brownie points. <laughs> it's just that good. You will want these on your shelf. Trust me, I promise. I would not lie to you. These are oh, so good. I always make it a standard practice to open the lid away from my face, just in case. amazing delicious quarts of Asian chicken thighs it smells so good 
I cannot begin to honestly tell you how explosively delicious this flavor profile is, and it's an absolute must add to your pantry. Whether you can or not, it is a fabulous sauce for an Asian inspired dish, but it is so good canning it up. The longer it sits, the better it gets. Well, thank you so much for joining me as I took my maiden voyage with you guys and canning in my catering kitchen. Or is it a canning kitchen now? I keep forgetting, I'm not sure. But I think it went so good. It was so nice to be able to do this on the stove, not outside with these elements. It's just insane as to why I haven't done this before now. But you can bet your bottom dollar going forward I'm going to make. I am still so excited to bring you yet another amazing recipe for January. Next week I'm going to use beef and take a vintage dish and bring it back to life with pizzazz. You're definitely going to want to stick around for that. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button and joining our community. I do make new videos every week and you never know what they're going to be about. But one thing's for sure, it's always about everything homemaking and the three D's. Design, decorating, and DIY. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you guys real soon. I wish you could smell this in my house, you all. Like, this is amazing. Just look at this. This is, oh, gorgeous.